Hello everyone and welcome back to our third day of this top 10 decks for world special where today we are going to be reviewing Vespiquen Valplum as you can see on your screen. Now this is probably one of the hardest decks to play in the meta game. Um, the turn one and all the small decisions you make on terms of what you discard, um, if you get the turn one Valplum, Increasing your odds of getting the turn one Valplume in order to have irritating pollen locking your opponent's item cards um, Deciding if it's worth it or if you might need an extra turn of items to fully set up to take advantage of Vespiquen if getting Valplume is even worth it. I mean, there's a lot of um, very small decisions which can affect the game like after your turn one a decision you made on that turn where you had free reign with your items and everything could impact the game on turn 10 or 10 11 turn 11 where you're missing a piece of something where you discarded something crucial you actually needed where you actually don't have any more valplumes and your valplume gets ko'd somehow um all of those little decisions end up mattering a lot and yeah um that's my feelings towards the deck for now um as i mentioned the main strategy is to get irritating pollen out on turn one in order to prevent your opponent from using any item cards the whole game um you achieve this by running forest of giant plants which allows you to bypass the evolution rule and you get to evolve whenever and however many times you want any of your grass pokemon and vespiquen is your main attacker as you run through your deck pretty quickly and you get to discard a ton of Pokemon in order for Vespiquen to to deal a huge amount of damage. Now, knowing your price cards is really important. Um, knowing how many energy are available to you, as you can see, we only run four special, four double colorless energy, just like Night March. And yeah, we have four Shimney X because this deck really runs through, and it's actually a pretty good attacker for this deck. Um, there are many instances where Sky Return is the better choice instead of using B Revenge and things like that. And it helps you set up KOs um, for B Revenge. And with the threat of the item lock, you actually get to play semi safely as most decks run one or maximum two Lysander. So it's not very often they can they can lock something up or they can actually get rid of the whatever is threatening them. And um, we are running to Bunnelby. This is because pricing can be an issue and Bunnelby is really, really crucial. Um, not only Rota Tyler in order to recover DCEs, but using Burrows sometimes can be quite crucial and important, especially under item lock. Um, it could be very, very important. Now, we also have four known. These provide an extra draw card and they also power up Vespiquen, so pretty nice. And in terms of items and supporter cards, we have very very standard things in order to increase consistency. We have two Sycamore, only two because we do have four Shaman and a ton of cards that allow us to go through our deck. Two Lysander so that we can ensure we can KO anything that's threatening us or potentially lock something active and start using Borrow with Bunnelby. Then we have two AC. This allows us to combine um, Forest of Giant Plants with Vileplume and that allow opens up a turn of item cards for ourselves and it ensures you pre you keep on preventing your opponent from using any, uh, any item cards. So that's really crucial to the deck strategy and everything else is pretty much consistency for Trainer's Mail, for Barrel Compressor, two Acrobikes, two Floatstone, four Stadiums and two Revitalizer. This allows you to recover attackers in Vespiquen. Um, make some fancy plays with Battle Compressor and the Valplume lines in order to to find them or to get Valplume into play. And we have our four beautiful pink double colorless energy. Now, that's pretty much the deck. Um, there's really nothing too outstanding of it other than maybe the second, the second Bunnel B. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be it for now. Um, let me did i make any changes i don't think so but whatever it doesn't really matter and yeah we'll see um we'll see how today goes now i'm really excited we've been doing pretty well um yesterday using trevenant if you haven't seen that deck um yet or that video yet 
We managed to beat two dark type decks with Trevenant, so that speaks volumes of the potential of the deck. Now, it wasn't the standard Darkrai Giratina deck that you would expect at Nationals, or even the standard, or <laughs> not Nationals, World, sorry, or even the standard, um, the standard Eveltal deck, but um, Dark is almost seen as an auto loss for, for Trevenant, and we managed to be two. Now we did get lucky a few times, but um, definitely some entertaining games at least. Now we are up against a psychic type deck, and if this is Trevenant, if this is Trevenant, we are going to be in such a huge amount of trouble if he gets a turn one. Um, yeah. If he gets a turn one Trevenant, we are going to be in a lot of trouble. If it's not Trevenant, we should have an easier time dealing with everything, but I highly suspect <coughs> it is Trevenant. Now, I'm not gonna bench the Shaman, but my strategy against this deck might end up being um, Shaman cycling. Not entirely sure. And um, yeah. Opponent is choosing their bench Pokemon, taking a very long time, and it is Trevenant. Okay. So, best case scenario for my opponent, he starts off with the Phantom, can potentially Wally on turn one. <coughs> Seeing my deck that way, um, he should suspect it is Vespico and Valplume. And yeah, he really, really needs to get the turn one Valplume. Or. <laughs> Turn one, wow. Otherwise, we might actually have a good shot of winning because item locking them actually really hurts them as well. Him playing the first stadium is also very crucial because he runs four, I run four, but if I manage to get a to get a forest of giant plants stock in the uh, stadium position I should be pretty free to um, or he will not be as energy efficient as he would like to be but he does find the turn one wallies so there's two things I can do here I can Lysander up the Shaman and give myself item cards but is it even worth it just look at my hand and that top deck was horrible. I have both of my flow stones. Okay, so now my strategy has to change. I might have to deck my opponent out. Um, I'm gonna attach the float stone to the active. I'm gonna bench the shaman so that I draw an extra card but by playing the float stone. And then I'm gonna attach the float stone to that shaman. I'm gonna use the unknown. But yeah, that forces my opponent to find an energy to keep item locking me, which is great. Um, I do find a null trouble, which I could use to find another shaman. But did you discard the Lysander? If I discard the Lysander, yep, I'm pretty much giving up all hope of using item cards ever again. I'm pretty much putting all my hope in shame in cycling. So the ends are going to be really crucial. Um, the I don't know, it's gonna be a weird it's gonna be a weird game definitely. <laughs> it's going to be a really, really weird game. Okay, gonna retreat, promote shaman. I'm gonna start doing some damage. Um, there's really not much else I can do. And by doing that, I force my opponent to have a stadium card, I force my opponent to have an energy to retreat, um, to have the Trevenant break if he wants to attack, so a lot of things. And I'm not going to be using any more re any more of my resources. Okay, so he had the energy and the float stone. Very nice. <laughs> um, he's going to verse Seeker Wally into the break, but I don't mind that, as long as he doesn't end me. I can shame in cycle here and I still have 
access to both of my sycamore. Um, Lysander would have been useless after this because he does have the floatstone there. He will pick up a prize on the combi, but I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, I'm gonna bench the unknown. I'm going to touch to the shaman. I'm going to bench the other shaman. Draw a single card. And okay, so I have a few stadiums. Um, if he lies under KO's the unknown, he he can. <laughs> I generally do not care about that. It's the ends I'm worried about. And in case he does use end right now, unknown gives me an extra card potentially next turn to find another shaman and uh, an extra DT. So it's going to be a really long and weird game. But we are going to try our best in order to win the match. Um, Shaman will 6 hit KO <laughs> the Trevenant, which is obviously not ideal. But there's really nothing I can do about that. Just have to make sure I don't make a mistake by attaching the DC to the bench um, Shaman or something weird like that. It's gonna keep using Sky Return after 6 turns. I will KO the Trevenant. Um, there's nothing he can bench that would potentially ruin this strategy. The Bursting Balloon doesn't matter. Um, I do not get KO'd. Or I shouldn't. I don't know if PTCGO is programmed correctly, but I shouldn't get KO'd. Even if he attacks for 60 and then I get the damage back onto me. Which would add up to 120, but Shaman does return to my hand before the damage or before the check for the knockout is applied. So we should be good there. Now, in an ideal world, I would have another Shaman right now. That would be the ideal world. But the ideal world rarely happens. Okay. Gonna attach there. Gonna play this guy. I do have access to Valplum, which could potentially be useful at some point, maybe, but not yet. And we're simply counting on my opponent not drawing an end. That's our main goal right now. He already has another Trevenant. I'm really glad Trevenant doesn't resist colorless, but resists fighting instead. <laughs> I'm really, really glad about that. He opts to retreat in order to potentially prevent KOs. Um, that Trevenant's not gonna do too much to us right now. And we can keep damaging it. And yeah. Um, attach. Shaman. And this is completely valid, guys. This is a completely, completely valid strategy. Um, especially in a best of three setting for worlds, for example. Um, if the game drags on long enough, you could potentially win game 1, and then game 2 would definitely not be over, under regular conditions. Now, he has a break once again, so six more, t 5 more turns to KO it, but I'm in no hurry. I am in no hurry. I definitely won't deck myself before him I don't think maybe that's his strategy maybe that's what he wants to accomplish to deck me out before I get a KO but I have 29 turns that's a lot of KOs <laughs> that is seriously a lot of KOs but okay he was actually simply not getting anything so he's gonna find another shaman find six brand new cards and I guess the thing that would save him would be a head ringer that would be worst case scenario a head ringer would definitely be worst case scenario onto a shaman. That would be pretty bad. He attaches an energy, he might replace the stadium. I don't know if he even plays the head ringer and like we did and yes in yesterday's video. Um now he's at risk of getting decked out. Now, I wouldn't mind using Sycamore, actually. Maybe I wouldn't mind doing that. To find another Shaman, to potentially find TCEs. Not entirely sure. Okay, so he opts to retreat. 
I mean, if he keeps doing that, there could be an opening for me in order to maybe get a KO. Um, I mean, for example, if right now, if I choose to evolve into Vespico and attach the DC and KO the Trevenant, he has two cards in his hand and he will only be dealing 30 damage to to a Vespiquen or I could potentially start using Bunnel B and start using um, Burrow on him in order to make him deck out because he has 3 energy in play out of a total potential 7 there's one in the discard pile um, his super rod is in the discard pile so I mean I really could surprise him maybe at some point he wallies into another Trevenant or the break? No, he chooses the break. Okay. So five more turns to KO it. And he passes. Okay. I am seriously tempted to bench the Bunnel B. If I had two DCs, I would actually bench the Bunnel B and start using Burrow. But because that is currently not the case, I'm not gonna do it. Once I get another DC, I will try to to start using Borrow on my opponent. <laughs> Man, this is such a weird game one. <laughs> such a weird way to start off the to start off today's video. Now, still no DCE. My hand is getting pretty pretty big. Um, yeah, there's a sky return. There's the other Shaman, three more turns. Sorry, this is not the most exciting game, but I'm doing what I need to do in order to win. And seeing my opponent's deck, he probably only runs the one N. Um, he actually opts to attach another energy to the benched Trevenant. So that's great. That's great news. That is great, great news. Okay. I'm gonna bench the Shaman. I'm gonna start using um, Burrow when um, Trevenant is only 10 HP from getting KO'd. So one more turn of Shaman and then I'm gonna start using Burrow because that's uh, his fifth energy. He does have um, mystery energy though, which could be a problem. But that's five out of potential seven or eight maybe. Um, okay. And there's the Sky Return. Now, he also has two Floatstone in play, so I reckon he doesn't have a third one. Not entirely sure. Thing is, I would really like to have another DC. That would be amazing to have another DC. Um, okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play my stadium. I now have the full Vileplume line available to me. So I'm gonna bench the Oddish. I'm gonna bench the Gloom. I cannot play item cards anyways. Um, that prevents him from playing any more Floatstone, from playing any versus Seekers. Um, so yeah, now I'm gonna do the the burrow strategy and we might actually win by decking my opponent out um i'm gonna bench one shaman i i'm tempted to bench both but maybe that's not the best idea and i'm just gonna burrow away his deck um i discard the head ringer that's perfect that is absolutely perfect although he wasn't going to be able to play it anyways and i discard a sycamore he wasn't going to be able to play the head ringer anyways. Now having Vileplume means he doesn't get to He doesn't get to um play any crushing hammers, which is also pretty key. And in order to prevent any damage, I'm gonna play my stadium. So that's three, right? Yeah. That's my third stadium, his third stadium. So I'm gonna keep using Burrow here. An energy, that's perfect. And that energy, hitting that um, mystery energy is absolute. Wow, dual energy. That should seal the game. 
That should definitely seal the game for us. Ah, oh, he's gonna end. Okay, that's fine. No big deal. That only puts him closer to decking, decking himself out. I suspect he does have 8 energy. I really, really do. I do find another DCE. And he concedes. Perfect. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was great. <laughs> that was absolutely great. Wow, what a what a match. What a match to begin the the video. How to win without Vespiquen. <laughs> How to win without Vespiquen. And that's exactly what I was talking about. If my opponent had um kept sacrificing the other Trevenants or if I had gotten those KOs, then I would have simply kept using Sky Return. Um we got pretty lucky that he didn't that he didn't find the head ringer early on. That was definitely pretty lucky. And looks like we are up against Night March. So we are going first. If we hit the turn one Vile Plume, we will probably see my opponent concede. And things are looking okay, I guess, for the turn one Vile Plume. Um, getting Vespicun out is not the priority definitely getting Valplum, so I'm gonna sacrifice that Vespiquin and the Oddish in order to find another Shaman, potentially. I also have the AC to use another Shaman, so all around, great start for us. Really, really great start. And we even get another Shaman. Okay, I'll take that. I will take that. Okay. So, what I'm actually gonna use or find with this Soul Trouble is... Huh. Yeah. The Arish and the Vespiquin. I'm gonna find a combi. So there's only three of. There's four stadiums. And we're gonna use at least three shamans. At least three shamans. So we really should be good here. I mean, odds say we will get the turn one Valpo. Although, we really need to retreat it though. That's going to be really really key we need to retreat the Valplum so well we actually already have a Valplum never mind <laughs> I have the AC to retreat I have the Ultra Ball to find the Valplum so we're good and I even find the Valplum there so 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 gonna bench the unknown I am going to use a null no okay Okay, play smart, Pablo. Play smart. I'm gonna use Fairball Letter. Okay. I'm gonna play securely. I'm gonna use Ultra Ball. Get rid of the Acro and the giant for the, the, the forest of giant plants. I'm gonna find a Vespiquin. And then I am going to use AC. Pick up the Gloom. Promote Shaman. Evolve there, and I'm gonna end my turn with the item lock and an AC in my hand in order to recover a Shaman and draw six brand new cards for next turn. Now, turn one item lock against Night March. I genuinely think that should seal the game. Um, yeah, Sycamore, if he has three Night Marchers in his hand. No, he has none. Um, he could have potentially KO'd the Shame in EX, but um, he cannot play any item cards. He's gonna Night March for zero damage. And wow, I even topped the Kane a Sycamore. So, what's better? I'm gonna use the AC. I mean, we, we have to use up the AC anyways, so might as well conserve the Sycamore for a potential next turn so that we can find the DCE. And if we find the DC right now, that's pretty much game. Okay, we do not find it. Um, I'm not scared of anything anymore, so I'm just gonna pass a turn. And next turn, I Sycamore. Hopefully find a DC and finish off my opponent with that turn one Valplum. Now, my opponent started two Sycamores and an end. So, okay, he ends us. That's really no big deal. Um, we're simply waiting to find another DC and if 
unless he runs there's the TC unless he runs three unless he runs three ah focus Palo. three Sycamore he has no way to discard any more any more Pokemon so just to be safe I guess I will I will take the KO with Shaman instead of Vespequin. I conserve the DCE. Um, I pick up a Shaman, potential to prize cards. And yeah, we are good here. He only has Joltik so far. So, <laughs> I mean, it's really a matter of time before my opponent concedes or we bench him out. That's all there is to it. Okay, so he does have three Sycamore. No Night Marchers discarded, so he only has one. He'll only be dealing 20 damage. Benches both Pump Caboose and passes. That is perfect. Okay. Um, I also opened up a little bit of bench space by picking up the Shaman, which is really, really great. I'm gonna do the exact same thing once again. Um, not gonna use Fairball Letter just yet. I'm simply gonna Sky Return and promote the Vespiquin. And I mean, at this point, we are so far ahead that I could potentially deck my opponent out <laughs> using Burrow as well. Um, he needs to find a Stadium, he needs to find a DCE to deal 40 damage to Vespiquin. Okay, he, he Hex Maniacs. Now that's, that's interesting. That's important. So conserving the DCE is definitely great. Um... Definitely, definitely great. Maybe promoting the Vespiquin, not great. But he's already played a supporter. Can he find a file compressor, a DCE, and other things? Okay. He attaches to the benched pump cabo. With the Versus Seeker, he is going to pick up an N for next turn. I generally do not mind that. I do get a turn of item cards myself which is really nice. Um, I will be able to play the Acrobike, I will be able to play the Ultra Ball, I have two Knowns, I have Shaman even to draw more cards. So my main goal is to find another Stadium. And we even top deck a Battle Compressor. Okay, so that's perfect. I'm gonna play the Battle Compressor. I'm gonna get rid of everything left of the Vile Plume line. Um, if he KOs us, we have the Revitalizer, so it's really no big deal. With the Ultra Ball, I am going to discard these two guys and find myself a combi so that I can have a nice stream of attackers and now I generally could start decking myself or decking my opponent out <laughs> I really could start doing that or even get back things with Rototiller um, I'm gonna keep the Bell Compressor, discard the Gloom um, this makes me, by doing all of this, it makes me less susceptible to an N, which is coming, obviously. Um, I would have loved to find a floatstone, but I do not. Now I still have the two sycamores, so I'm gonna get rid of the Ultra Ball and the two Battle Compressors. Those are cards that after this turn will not be useful. And I have no abilities. I mean, I could simply pass. Because the active pump kabo doesn't really threaten me too much. Or I could use Burrow. Or Rototiller. Or I can take a KO one. Just be done with it. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna take the KO. Um, he still needs to discard two more Night Marchers in order to KO the Vespicoin. There's no guarantee he will be able to do that. Yeah, he only has three. If he ends us. That means he won't be KOing the Vespiquin. So that's perfect. Um, 60 damage. <laughs> no big deal, really. No, no big deal. Yes, he gets rid of our uh, 3 DCEs, but he's not going to be able to KO us. And then we hit him for a bajillion damage, and we win. And there we go. So, B Revenge for a bajillion damage, 110. And that's our second win in a row. Now this is standard Vespiquin Valpo. <laughs> that's how the deck works. Not the other match where... <laughs> Honestly, the strategy was really, really, really weird. 
that's what you would expect the night march matchup to look like now if we hadn't gone first things could have been a lot different but because we did go first and we did get the turn one Valplum, like there was no hurry to find these keys to draw more cards your number one goal is to get the turn one Valplum in that particular in that particular matchup now i'm looking at the versus rewards maybe okay no maybe there's a bug there and that's why we're not i don't know okay fire water colorless deck that's probably volcanion ex that's most likely volcanion ex now volcanion volcanion is weak to water and wow our hand is pretty crappy unless we find an ultra ball off of that trainer's mail I do not see ourselves winning this match. I generally do not. Yeah, our hand. Not really ideal. Okay, we cannot bench anything else. My opponent might. Probably using Volcanion. He has Fire Sleeves, Crowdon. Yep, there's a Volcanion X. Okay, but at least we top deck the Shaman. I will take that. And our trainer's mail finds us a sycamore, which we definitely need. Which we definitely need. Okay. So, does my opponent get a sixth turn? Or can we actually find the, um, the turn one Valplume to prevent any compressor, um, blacksmith shenanigans? Um... Okay, so not ideal to draw two glooms off of that, but we're gonna see Sycamore right now, hopefully, nope, um, not getting too many useful things at the moment, um, I do however, I'm able to evolve there, okay, so first off I'm gonna use the Acrobike, two battle compressors is my choice, so now I really need the unknowns to come through for us, um, let me check the revitalizers first. There's both of them are there. Now, hmm, gonna get rid of one vile plume because in case we draw the revitalizer, well, I could get rid of two vile plumes, and I'm gonna get rid of an oddish. Yeah, mm, well, he could lice and rub the oddish, but then I still have more oddish. That's fine. And then I use farewell letter number one into a uh, shaman that's perfect i will take that i will take that um but i'll be not gonna bench it just yet i will bench the combi and then i'm going to use shaman for four more cards a revitalizer would be absolutely crucial here no revitalizer um another vespiquen we do find a float stone however and we have two more cards with farewell letter Let's see what we get. We get a forest of giant plants, not ideal. And then we get another or something interesting. A trainer's mail, okay. Trainer's mail can find us a revitalizer, but it does not. But it does find us the acrobike, which gives us another chance of finding a shaman, an ultra ball, or the revitalizer, which we do not, but we find a trainer's mail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we trainer's mail into ah, uh, okay, an ultra ball, and the ultra ball can find us a shaman, and the shaman can find us the revitalizer. <laughs> so, four more cards. Okay, this is probably going to be our last chance to find the revitalizer, but we really need that turn one Valplum. So, can we find the revitalizer? We find the gloom. <laughs> so the trainer's mail, our last chance, we find the ultra ball. Perfect. Absolute perfection. Okay. When I evolve there, I will use an ultra ball. I'm gonna sacrifice a DCE and the combi because with Bundle B, I can recover the DCEs. And by locking my opponent on turn one, I don't think he will be able to power up the thing first. 
although 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so one bundle be more or not would not have made a difference. I'm gonna retreat into the uh, to the Vespiquen just in case and I'm gonna pass. So that was a pretty sick turn. Now we only have 13 cards left in our deck so that's something important to consider. He immediately counters stadiums, um, that's one way to get energy in the discard pile, but in theory he really should not be able to um, to KO us. And with the 11 Pokemon we have in our discard pile we actually KO the Volcanian, the regular Volcanian exactly, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, oh wait, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, oh, I'm 10 short actually, I'm 10 short on the KO, so now, because I cannot, well I could do it KO, are we in a hurry though? I'm not gonna be able to, well, nope, unless I find my last unknown, so actually that's a better play, I think. I'm gonna be a bit conservative, open up a bench space, um, if my opponent for some reason opted not to, opted not to retreat or whatever, we could do the bundle B strategy in order to deck him out, um, or rather prevent ourselves from decking out, we could recover the Lysander, we could recover the DCE, could recover AC. My opponent actually uses blacksmith immediately on the active and passes. Okay, that's fine. Still no threats so far. So I'm gonna use. I still do not KO. But after this sky return, I will KO. The issue becomes. I mean, if he doesn't bench anything else, then I can safely Sycamore in order to get enough Pokemon to KO the, the bench Volcanion. But you would expect him to bench something else after this turn. Okay, he passes. There's a Revitalizer. I'm gonna retreat into this Vespiquen. And I am going to V Revenge for the KO. Maybe attaching the DC would have been a better idea in case he's holding on to an N waiting for this to happen we find the unknown so with that unknown we are no longer in a position where we need to seek more but yeah that's game that is definitely game i'm just gonna seek more put a lot of pokemon in my discard pile four more and take the ko and we are going to win our third straight match as you can see that turn one valplum being completely completely devastating for my opponents and there we go there we go pretty happy with how, with how the deck is performing we're three games in under 40 minutes of the match or of the video rather so uh, this chair is so uncomfortable I need to buy a new chair but yeah we're doing pretty great so far today. Let's not jinx it, Pablo. Let's not jinx it. And um, let's keep doing our best. Man, that world's logo. Like, I'm looking at how the video is recording. The world's logo looks too pixelated for my liking. But, I don't know. Looking at over a thousand championship points, that, that's really satisfying to see. <laughs> okay, so a dart type grass and colorless and psychic type deck Greninja nope <laughs> not today <laughs> but you'll be appearing on Tuesday's video so my open hand has no basic Pokemon he will see now that I'm no uh, that I'm not using Greninja I'm actually using Greninja's number one enemy in my opinion <laughs> um okay wow <laughs> oh boy um i'm gonna start the unknown because i want to use shaman's ability <laughs> oh okay good luck have fun to you as well 
Okay. So he opts to bench something else. Okay, it is a dark type deck. <laughs> Man, this hand. This absolutely beautiful hand with three beautiful... <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I guess I'll keep the Sycamore, but... This is not good. We both start to Unknown, <laughs> which is pretty funny, I guess. Um, do I attach to the Unknown? I guess I will use Shaman for two cards. But yeah, our hand is absolutely <laughs> atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. Wow. We're gonna attach the Flowstone. I'm gonna retreat. And I'm gonna have to pass. Well, I'm gonna use Farewell Letter, I guess. We lose our first DCE. We find a compressor, which <laughs> um, I guess I'll get rid of two glooms and a vile plume if there's two. Yep, that way um, this will be the second vile plume now in our discard pile. I cannot play the sycamore right now. I generally cannot play with only one TC. I might be able to play with two TCs in the deck, but not with just one. So what I need to do is use Sky Return and Sycamore so that I get to conserve one TC. The absolute worst top deck ever would be another TC or our second Sycamore. That would be pretty depressing. But yeah. My opponent gets free reign of supporters. Absolute free reign. Wow, he's using Talonflame. That's interesting. He already discarded three right away wow so he has wow that's really interesting that's a really good usage of talent flame if you don't get it on turn one simply discard it in order to power up vespiquen that's really nice now my opponent is making the best use of his resources possible one two three four five Huh. Wow. I don't see ourselves winning this match at all. If we had a muscle band to KO this combi, I would feel really good. He has seven Pokemon. Wow, he even has Jirachi. Wow, 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 wow. That is definitely worst case scenario. Absolute worst case scenario. I'll keep the acro, I guess. Um, could have kept the forest of giant plants. Really no big deal. I'm not gonna be able to kill that guy. Well, Revitalizer. If there was a Nodish in my discard pile, that would be pretty great to have. But because I don't, well, I'm gonna discard both anyways. Ugh. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Man, if only I had discarded a Nodish. But I think I still need item cards myself in order to potentially bring myself back into the game um, there's a Nodish, there's a combi I'm actually going to sacrifice both unknowns in order to in order to huh yeah I think Bunnelby is looking a lot nicer <laughs> right now <laughs> as a strategy um, yeah I'll get rid of both Forest of giant plants, why did it do that? Okay, there we go. Then I'm going to trainer's mail into nothing because I already played a supporter and I'm gonna ultra ball for a brand new shaman of six cards. So I need my revitalizer or the one one Valplum line. Things are not looking good at all. In order to even get a turn to lock. I mean, turn one was pretty much impossible. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, I can lock. Yeah. And then what? He has a muscle band. He has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So he KOs Shaman exactly. And I would be getting rid 
with a ton of resources and sacrificing the float stone so maybe going for another shaman is a better choice here gonna use trainer's mail <laughs> man I use ultra ball discard the AC and the ultra ball yeah uh, anyways I'm gonna play this guy here I'm going to bench the bottle B and I'm going to use an ultra ball into another shaman which is priced there's two shamans priced so that's game <laughs> that is game there's two shamans freaking priced why should have realized I should have put more attention I was just so centered on trying to win Ugh. okay so my opponent gets another turn of item cards another turn great right guys absolutely great okay and I sky return for no damage and <sighs> do I sacrifice <clears throat> the bundle B or the combi I only have one Lysander left as well if it's even in the deck I generally do not know what to do I guess I sacrifice the bottle B for now. Ugh, so frustrating. This is so so freaking frustrating. Should have gone for the for the vile plume. Should have gone for the vile plume. Open take. Wow. Okay, that changes everything. Well, he has basic energy. Never mind. Never mind. I mean, I still have to sky return. That's my play here, definitely. I need to sky return like forever. <laughs> need to sky return forever. But maybe. Well, no, because he has Zoroark. Access to Zoroark. Ugh. I need him not to power up the Zoroark. And <laughs> this is such a weird game. And he has Verseeker into Sycamore. I don't mind that. And another Verseeker into X Maniac. Okay. Okay. The two energy in the discard pile are pretty crucial. To know it's pretty crucial to find that out. Definitely pretty crucial. Okay. Um, my play 100% is to pick up Chaos with Shaman. But if I use Shaman right now, I might deck myself out before him. Well, I do have Bunnel B, so maybe not. <laughs> but I'm not gonna lock him. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous. How am I not getting the lock? for another turn man <laughs> ah my stupid mouse is not helping us either <laughs> okay I sacrifice the combi of course we have three sacrificial combis now we know he has hex maniac and he has sycamore he also uses Hex Maniac. I don't mind that. His last, The last card in his hand is um, well now it's not. <laughs> now it's something else. But it's gonna come down to his energy count. I'm gonna bench this guy. I'm gonna evolve right away and <laughs> my last DCE. This is so sick. <laughs> This is generally really, really sick. I'm gonna take the KO. I can KO, right? Yeah, I have enough Pokemon. I'm gonna KO. And either he KOs me back or he uses Jirachi. But if I can KO the Vespiquen that has 60 damage on it, that's his last DCE, which is great. 
that brings him down to only dark energy. There's Zoroark. Oh, that. I needed Valplume to prevent that. Okay, he chooses not to put back energy. And he uses Sycamore. Okay. Basically, I need him not to power up the Zoroark. That's fine. I need to do the Lysander... <laughs> I need to do a Lysander... Oh, wow. Well, the Zero Six, no big deal. <sighs> I need to Lysander up his Zoroark. Or whatever, the Ivelta. Most likely the Zoroark. I need to do that. Right? So... But first I'm gonna KO the Vespiquen. First I'm gonna KO the Vespiquen. I'm gonna bench the Unknown. I could sacrifice the Unknown. I mean, there's no guarantee he has the energy as well. But yeah, definitely gonna sacrifice the Unknown for now. Yeah, gonna retreat. Promote Shaman. And... We're gonna Sky Return. <laughs> Man, this is such a good game. If you're watching Thadens, really, seriously, this is a really good game. It's going to be really, really, really close. Okay. And then I... Well, maybe it's better to give away the combi. Because if it doesn't KO, I can free retreat. If he does choose to KO, yeah. Combi is the better play because of the fact that I have no way to retreat to known without sacrificing my last TC. So this is definitely better, I think. Um, wow, this is a really weird match. We both have 8 cards, but I do have the Bunnel B. And I should be able to access um, my Lysander, if it's even in my deck. Without decking myself out. Okay, he places another darkness there on the Vespiquen. That's fine. He Lysanders up the Vespiquen. That is perfectly fine by me. It's really not a big... It's, there's no difference. And now... I could... Okay. He has no more DC left. But neither do I. I only have one DCE, right? If I Lysander up the Zoroark and he plays four basic energy. Uh, okay, I'm gonna use the Battle Compressor, see what's in my deck still. Um, the Lysander is there. So, I'm gonna get rid of the Battle Plume. And the Vespiquen. And the Ultra Ball. No. Just gonna get rid of the Valplum. Let me just think this through. I need the Lysander. Well, I can actually eat up my whole deck, bring up the Zoroark. Oh, by discarding Valplum, I can no longer lock him. <laughs> Damn it. No. No, this is such a good game. Okay, I'll play faster, I'll play faster, I promise. Um, do I take the KO? <laughs> I'll wait. Get the pizza and I'll wait. No! <laughs> oh, this was going to be such a good game, Thadens. This was going to be so close. Did you have energy? Ah, oh, so many questions. <laughs> so many questions. Man. Okay. My plan was going to draw all my deck, Lysander up the Zoroark, and, and then put a DC back into my deck, and... Or no, put two DCs back into my deck. Or no, put a DC and the Bunnel B back into my deck. That would have been the right play, I think. I think. I don't know. 
Ah, oh, I really wanted to finish that game. No, <laughs> that was so good. Tathens or Thalens or Tathens, yeah. Really, really good game. That was so close. That was so crucial. Um, my early game DC discards ended up being compensated by your double DC discard. I never got Valplume. Ah, anyway, that was so so weird and so cool and so awesome to play. Thank you so much. And guys, we're now 55 minutes in. I think we've had some really good games, so I'm gonna leave the um, gonna leave the video up to this point. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really enjoyed using today's deck. And yeah, um, tomorrow we are going to be using Greninja. So definitely look forward to that. And I will see you guys tomorrow for more TTG action as we try to to explore, to fully explore the top 10 decks for World 2016. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.